Hello everyone. Today we are going to go over work order basics. So if you have the shop edition of Fleet Maintenance Pro 15, you have the ability to create or issue work orders for equipment. Uh, what a work order is, is if there's maintenance due or a repair that's due on one of your units, I can make a work order, add my tasks that need to be done, and my work order can stay in an in-progress state I can put the work order on hold, complete some of the tasks, and then later on I can come back and finish the work order or close it out. Um, so we're going to show a couple of examples. So in order to make a work order, I would highlight my unit that I want to make a work order for, and I can click this Issue Work Order button at the top. Another option is to right-click on my unit, and I have the Issue Work Order button here as well. Your unit does not necessarily have to have something due or overdue on it to make a work order. I can make a work order for any units on my screen if I wanted to, for example, complete a task early. In this case, we're going to go ahead and address this overdue item on my new unit here, 001. So I'm going to click on it, click on Issue Work Order. I'm going to get this pop-up here. It asks me if I want to do my selected highlighted equipment, which I do. And in the middle, do I want a completely empty slate with a blank work order, or do I want to include due and soon due tasks, or just tasks that are due? So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the default, include due and soon due tasks, hit OK. And notice it automatically brought in my air filter task that was overdue um, on my equipment screen. So let's go over this window a bit. So we've got our work order number on the top. I can highlight this and change this if I want, but the system automatically makes one for you. So we recommend just keeping that. Uh, for example, if I save this one, if I make a new work order, it knows 1451 is the next one. Um, scheduled, whenever this work is scheduled to be done, I can schedule it in the future. When I want for it to come up a due. When I started it, and then when I complete, there will be an option here to, to put in when it was done. Beneath that, I've got my unit name. I've got my odometer reading of when my tasks were done. And then I've got these tabs of so maintenance, parts, labor, attachments, and notes. So we're going to go over these briefly. So maintenance, I already have my air filter in here. If I wanted to add something new as a task, I would click on the Add button on the bottom. On this screen, it's going to ask me what type of task I want to put in here. So if you have this unit assigned already to a preventive maintenance schedule and my task drop down, I can pick other items. Um, if I click on repair, if I have any open repairs, they'll pop up in here. Or if it's a repair that I've done in the past, it'll show up in here. I can also click on other and I can just type in a task name. So it doesn't necessarily have to pop up from a list. So for this one, we already have air filter here, so if I go ahead, we'll demonstrate this. If I delete air filter out, click on my add button, air filter shows up on my drop down now because it's not already on another work order. And this is the only item on my schedule. So I've got air filter. I have the option to add parts and labor to it. So if I click on select parts, I can go ahead and choose a part number, you know, whatever I want to add to this. I also have the option of adding labor, so I can add any technician on here to show that they did some work on this. When I'm done with this screen, I can click on save, and now it's got my air filter task along with the total of how much the parts were. Parts are already listed here, and my labor is already listed here. Now you might be wondering, do I have to add parts and labor through these two buttons? You don't necessarily have to. So when I click on parts and labor here, it's assigned to the specific task that I'm doing, um, but I don't have to add them here. You can go to the parts tab, click on add or labor and click on add if I want to do it that way. So it doesn't have to be from the add screen here. I have the option for attachments. If I want to attach like a PDF or some kind of document, um, to this work order specifically, I can, so I can reference it later. You also have a notes field where I can type in any notes that I want about what happened, um, you know, this, this uh, 
something specific happened with this task that I did on this equipment that I want to note on here in case we need to reference it later. Um, use it however you would like. On the right hand side, I have some more drop down boxes. So I've got priority, high, normal, and low. I would assume most of the time it'd probably be set to normal unless you have something that's high priority. That helps you to kind of manage your workflow if you have a lot of work orders open at once. Um, type of work order, preventive or repair, you can add to this list and add different types if you want later. If I have a cost center, I can assign it here. If there was a PO associated with this, so if I have a purchase order where I needed to go in and uh, I was running out of a part that I needed for this work order, um, and I went made a PO to get extra quantity ordered, I can put a part number here just to show that I referenced that it's associated with this work order. Invoice number if you would like, and then there's two custom fields where you can type in whatever you want here, give it a custom label um, to help you organize it. Um, it comes up with a subtotal on the bottom already, you could discount it. Taxes come from the location of the unit under locations, that's where you set your tax rates. And then I've got my total down here. If I want to override the total, I can uncheck this. So let's say, for example, this is a special case. I want to make it $80. I certainly can. On the bottom left, I can assign this to someone. So I can assign this work order to a technician or employee who's going to take care of it for me or an outside vendor. And then, of course, I can email print. I can make a purchase order or invoice from here. And then I can save it when I'm done. One important point here on the top right is our statuses for work orders. So these are the ones that are built in. You can add your own custom ones if you'd like. So I've got open, in progress, on hold, and complete. So it starts as an open work order. So we'll go ahead and save this. We'll let it update here. If I click on work orders, notice that I've got my new equipment here with my open work order. I can double click on it. And that'll bring you right back to the screen. On the top, if I want to switch this out and say that this task uh, is in progress or this work order is in progress, I can simply click on the type, click on the save button, and now it shows up as in progress. I can also switch it out, say I want to put this on hold. I'm going to complete this later. You can do that. Let's say I have multiple tasks in here. So let's say I'll add one of these repairs. Let's add one more. So I've got a few items here that I need to do. I can complete some of these um, with this checkbox to the left. So let's say I completed these two. I can save that. And then the next time I come in here, I can see that those items have been done, but the air filter has not yet. If I click on complete on the top, that'll show that my tasks are done. I can give it a, a date and time when it was finished and then a meter reading. Whatever I enter here will go onto my equipment. Uh, so it'll update that meter. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and make it 41. I'll save it. So now it's gone from this screen. So when I go back to work orders, which gives me just open ones, I would have to click on closed to show that work order that I just finished. And then I can go back in here, double click on it. And then I can see my tasks that were done, the odometer reading and everything else. So now if I go back to my equipment, notice that it's not overdue anymore. That task has been completed that from my PM schedule. If I want to, I could go to last PM here, last PM setup, and it'll show me that I finished this task today at that mileage. If I go into the history of the equipment, when I go to maintenance, it'll show me that task, these tasks that I did on that work order today. I can actually double click this line to bring it back to my work order screen to show me what was done, I can look up any notes, see who worked on it, all sorts of information here. If I need to, let's say, go back and reopen the work order for some reason, I can go to closed, double click on my work order, simply set it here to open in progress, whatever you would like, and then it'll bring it back to open status. 
and then I can go in, modify things, uncheck some of these if they were, weren't really done, or I can add something that I missed. And that is pretty much it for work orders. For more information, please visit our website at mtcpro.com.